Hey, everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. You're watching Disruptive Investing. And I want to talk about the EV adoption S-curve. So we talked about this for so many years on Tesla Time News, especially back in 2016 through 2018, when very few people believed that electric vehicles would actually become the dominant form of transportation. And I realized the other day that many of you investors may not really know where we stand with EVs versus ICE or internal combustion engine automobiles. Yeah, are EVs really gaining traction? Because depending on where you live, you may not see that many on the road and you may be thinking, this is never going to happen. EVs are never going to replace ICE cars, at least not in my lifetime. So we're going to take a look at the numbers and see what's really going on. Now, before we get started, I wanted to remind everyone what an S-curve is. We talk about it a lot. So if you already know, you get a gold star, but it's good for everyone to be on the same page. An S-curve is how the adoption of a new disruptive technology looks when you chart it out over time. So for instance, if we take a look at this chart from Market Realist, and let's find a real S-looking curve here. Okay, um, how about air travel? Nice. That's in light blue starting around 1940. You can see that for the first decade, practically nobody was traveling by air. Why? There weren't that many airports. There weren't that many planes. It was expensive and you couldn't even fly that far or fast. Then as the technology kept improving, costs came down, comfort went up. And by the 1970s, half of the country was flying. Then by 1990, there was an almost 100 percent rate of adoption an S curve. Low to start, fast adoption in the middle then maxes out at the top as we squeeze in the last consumers who can fly. So as you can see from this chart, some technologies get adopted super fast, like almost everything after 1990 did, right? Internet, credit cards, smartphones, digital cameras, social media, whereas some technologies like the telephone took a while because there was so much infrastructure that had to be built out. Wires had to get run to every home and business across the globe, and that took a while. And that brings us to EVs. Yeah, so let's look at some data for EVs versus ICE vehicles. All right, so this is data from the EIA, the International Energy Agency, from 2016, when we started Tesla Time News, until today. First column is the year. Second column is EV sales in millions. Third column is ICE vehicle sales in millions. And the final column is EV sales as a share of total sales. Now, if you're experienced with looking at tables of numbers, this might be useful. But honestly, I feel like for most people, this just looks like a jumble of numbers. I mean, we can see that EVs had 1.2 million sales globally in 2016. And then just seven years later, we're at an estimated, because this year ain't over yet, of 14.1 uh, million, which is quite an increase. Yeah, at the same time in 2016, there were over 80 million ICE sales and that dropped to 60 million this year. It's the final column that makes this the easiest to comprehend, right? 1.5% EV market share globally in 2016. And today, that's 23.5%. So less than two out of every 100 cars sold in 2016 were electric. And today, it's almost one out of every four are electric. All right, so let me just chart that curve for you. But that doesn't look like an S curve. Ah, good point. You know why? Because we're not done drawing it. Well, then why didn't you finish drawing it? Well, so this is what the curve for say, well, let's look at this chart, which spreads things out a bit more. Uh, how about the microwave? Okay. Introduced around 1970, took about 12 years until about 1982 to reach about the same adoption rate that EVs have now, about 23.5%. I was alive back then. I remember going to my friend's houses when I was a kid and uh, then as a, like a preteen. And it was pretty rare to find a microwave oven. They were pretty big and expensive. Uh, and then when I was a teenager, they were everywhere, right? The prices came way down. There were more choices. And it seemed like one Christmas in 1987, everyone got one. That was the present that year. You can see it in the chart. It went from 12 years to get to the first 25% adoption rate. Then it, in just about seven years, microwaves jumped to 80% adoption. The almost vertical part of the S curve happened fast. So that's why our EV adoption curve doesn't look like an S yet. Right. We're just about to hit the super vertical part. As more mines and refineries go online to make battery materials and more battery factories go online to make batteries and more EV factories go online to make EVs, the supply goes up. Prices come down. Demand goes up. Supply keeps going up. Prices keep coming down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Until at some point in, say, 2030, there is your 80% adoption and the curve slows down again as we squeeze every last person into EVs and ICE cars finally die out. Now, does every technology go through an S curve? No. Some technologies start off looking pretty hopeful and get some adoption and then they just get disrupted themselves. So, for instance, VHS tapes. 
Uh, just as there was Blockbuster on practically every corner in America and everyone was renting VHS movies, along came DVDs and Blockbuster had to start renting those out. And then came Blu-rays and then came a new disruptive technology, streaming. And of course, we all know what happened around 2008 when Blockbuster just disappeared from every corner in America and Netflix and other streaming services took over. And you savvy investors out there might be saying, well, hang on. What if robo taxis come along in the next couple of years? Won't they disrupt the EV market? Yes and no. Right. Yes, they will disrupt EV ownership because it's unlikely that you'll own a car after that point. But those robo taxis will certainly be electric. Right. I think a good exercise is to look at charts like this one of past technologies. Really dive in, especially for time periods that you know about. Familiarize yourself with how long it took certain technologies to hit maximum adoption. Think about what infrastructure had to be put in place to get those products and services to everybody in the country. With VHS tapes, it meant you had to have physical brick and mortar locations in every town across the nation. Netflix came along and said, remember Netflix before streaming? They came along and said, these are pretty small, these little DVDs. Do we need to have locations? We don't. We won't have a location. We will mail it to you right. in the mail. And I know friends who still, uh, until I think last week, Netflix announced they won't do it anymore. We're still doing it that way, right? Because it was pretty smart. You didn't have to have that physical brick and mortar location. It saved Netflix a lot of money and they could kind of pass that savings on to you. It did mean that you had to wait for episode seven to come in the mail, but that was life. With cell phones, it meant that you had to have not only cell phone production, but you also had to have cell towers placed, you know, like every mile throughout the country. And this is probably why there's that famous case of McKenzie Consulting, who uh, AT&T hired back in the 90s. You know, how many uh, people will have cell phones in 10 years? And they were completely wrong, right? They said like 900,000. And it turned out to be like 100x more than that. It's easy to think that it'll take longer to get that infrastructure in place for, let's say, cars taking over from horses or cell phones taking over from landlines. We tend to forget how fast capitalism jumps into action when they see an opportunity to make money, right? Capitalists see an opportunity, they build a factory, and boom, they start making millions of something. I mean, just look at gigafactories. Uh, you take a watermelon patch in Shanghai, and then a year later, it's pumping out Model 3s. So I hope you found that helpful. Looking at a technology that we talk about every week here on the show, electric vehicles, going from 1.2 million EVs sold in 2016, only 1.5% of the total market, to over 14 million sales just this year. That's just seven years later. And it's easy to think that this line will be linear because that's the way the chart looks right now. But it's about to take a very fast turn, almost vertical. It's gonna look like a hockey stick. And that's what most people can't imagine. And that's why I wanted to show you other technologies that you do know about and show you how their lines went almost vertical during that mass adoption phase. That is what is about to happen to EVs. That is disruptive technology. And that's what you're looking for as disruptive investors. We'll see you guys next week on Disruptive Investing.